You know, one of the things with AEW to me, you know, in the last year is that, I mean, I, I think that it's caught on, especially with younger crowds, especially under 35, it's caught on pretty quick. And I think that it has, um, I, I, I don't want to say exposed how WWE, because I, I don't want this to be a, a negative thing on WWE, but sometimes, but, you know, half the time when we talk about it, that's what it ends up being because we go in there and we'll go like, well, you know, why is this, why are these shows so much more entertaining to watch on television than these other shows when these other shows have all of this talent and all of this money behind them and all of these bells and whistles? And your show has bells and whistles too, but it's like one is so upbeat and fun and one is so dreary so much of the time i mean especially the last couple of months i know you've seen some of it too it's freaking dreary you know you're watching it's almost like you're you know uh, watching paint try type of a thing not always but uh, but far more than it ever should be and it's kind of like i'm sitting there going like you know these guys are are supposed to be the masters of this and they know how to do it better than anyone else and then here we are this company comes in with with tony who you know granted a fan from childhood and a smart and a smart guy but it's like they're already surpassed what these other guys are doing in the first year, you know, as far as entertaining their audience, making their audience, you know, have fun. And and it, and the gap is only getting bigger in that sense. And it's just kind of like if I was in the other company, I mean, and running the other company, I mean, I would I would be looking at this going like this should not happen. And I'm embarrassed that it happens, you know, as opposed to their thing of, you know, let's we, we got to make changes. So we're going to do every change other than change the product, if you know, which is kind of like, well, that's where my first change would be. You know, when I would if I go like somebody's kicking my ass in the product and, you know, I'm going to figure out not not to copy them, but figure out a new way to do it. And they're doing it the exact same way. Yeah, then I mean, we know what their problem is. It, it's yeah, it's we do. one person, three letters, VKM. That's the problem. Until he's gone, it or relinquishes control, it's just it's not going to change. You know, and I, I just I, I when I watched the show like during the during the pandemic era when I watched the show, I guess even before, especially during the pandemic era, I'm just like. Oh, thank God I'm not there. Jesus Christ. Like, what would I be doing on that show right now? Can you imagine? You think it would be any good? Like, come on. But I, yeah, I really don't want to get into a like, bashing them thing, you know. But all the LED boards and shit in their Thunderdome isn't going to fix their problems. It's, we know what their problem is. Did you see a uh, – I saw a picture of the Thunderdome. And it had like – Yeah, I've seen a lot. It had, I guess it had like all the – it was like a Zoom call. With all the <laughs> yeah, with all the faces on the wall, and it tripped me out because it immediately for, immediately made me think of. Uh, have you ever read the book Fahrenheit four fifty one? I have not, but I've certainly heard of it. Oh, you should. It's tr- so this book was uh, it was written in nineteen fifty three by a guy named Ray Bradbury, and he basically it's kind of like a dystopian kind of thing, kind of like kind of like nineteen eighty four. But he basically predicts in 1953 exactly what 2020 will be like. It's trippy. If you read it, you're like, whoa. It's about like – because the firemen, they burn books because they don't want people to be literate or to be smart or think for themselves. They just want to feed them with all this uh, like mindless entertainment. And they had, the thing that – why the Thunderdome made me think of it is because – this is in the 50s before computers and social media, but he kind of imagined what it would be like. And the thing was like your family, quote unquote, in the parlor wall. So like in your living room, the wall would be like filled with all these faces that you like communicate with and hang out with. That's like kind of like social media is now. And that's exactly what the Thunderdome looked like. And I went, oh, my God, it's the thing from Fahrenheit 451 come to life. Trippy. Mm. That that was sure, I, just the, lost. I, I did see like the first. Sure, I just lost everybody. Sorry, but I don't know. Read the book, <laughs> Garrett, Garrett. Garrett, did you ever read that book? No, I didn't read the book, but I did watch like the first. I don't know five minutes of SmackDown because I wanted to see if the TV show looked like the photo, like John was talking about, and there was Braun Strowman and and the Fiend staring at each other in the ring, and you saw that gigantic screen of faces and people kind of fake cheering and. And yeah, it, it was it was exactly like it looked in the photo. Yeah, I hope I hope it's awesome. 
because there's so I have friends there. I have so much great talent there that I want. I want WWE to be awesome. Honestly, when WWE sucks at this point, I don't get like excited about it. Like, haha, you suck. It kind of pisses me off because they're the number one brand in the sport. They represent the sport to a lot of people. And when their product is like embarrassing to watch, it makes all of wrestling look bad. And it's like you're driving away fans that could potentially be WWE and AEW fans. Like I want wrestling all over the world to be awesome. The hotter it is all around, the better it is for everybody, right? 